as far as the uh, the question of uh, doctors' pensions is concerned, that's one thing I would like to say straight away. I think Therese Coffey is absolutely right to address that issue head on. It's bonkers uh, that the rules around doctors' pensions should be a disincentive on them to, to continue to look after patients. So I think she was right to deal with that. Uh, but having said that, I have to say, I think her plan for the future of the NHS was, to put it mildly, disappointing. And it's worth, in the budget week, just reflecting that the budget, the additional budget for the NHS announced by Therese Coffey on Thursday was 1% of the cost of the tax reductions that was announced by the Chancellor on Friday. Now, I think it's worth reflecting on the word budget. Budget should be a plan for mm. both income and expenditure. What we heard from Kwasi Kwarteng was that he was going to cut the government's income through taxation without hearing anything about the implications of that for public services, of which, of course, the NHS is an absolutely key service. Yeah. Um, I'm going to cheat because I asked the team to invite you in particularly to talk about the health service, but you've raised the issue of the budget. So one quick one. I mean, you've been there, done it. You were in a whole range uh, of governments led by, by different prime ministers at one time and another. Uh, it seems to me that that budget from Kwasi Kwarteng uh, was two things. It was a shot in the dark at growth, but it was also a reaffirmation of a core set of Tory beliefs that we've not actually seen since the 80s. Uh, what's the Doral take? Well, the Doral take on this is actually it's nothing to do with the 80s. It's a reversion to the early 1970s and a gamble on growth under Tony Barber. One of the key messages of Margaret Thatcher I was never a Treasury Minister under Margaret Thatcher. I was under John Major. But we applied the same principles when John was Prime Minister, that if you prepare a budget, you have to look at both income and expenditure. And uh, the, what Margaret Thatcher always insisted uh, was that expenditure had to be matched to income. Now, what we've got yesterday uh, was tax cuts with no idea, no indication at all of what the implication of that is going to be for public services, for the National Health Service, for education, for social care, for the police, essential public services, which rely on tax revenues uh, to be able to do their job. Yeah, a, a brilliant analysis. And while you were uh, explaining that, we were running pictures over the various players for folk who are listening to our conversation on radio. And just there at the end, uh, Liz and, and Kwati, uh, uh, Kwasi Kwatang uh, going about a factory. Uh, but I, let me repeat that first question, then I promise we will move on to the detail of the health uh, sector because you're an expert in that field. But listening carefully to that analysis, Stephen, was it a reassertion of philosophy, be it Tony Barber and Ted Heath, or be it Thatcher, Lawson, at the end of the 80s, and I do take that distinction, and you're a better historian than I am, or was it technically inept? It was right philosophically, but it was technically inept, or both? Well, I'm, I'm, I always think that if you're in the Treasury, of course you have some ideas about how to make the economy work. I'm as, as much an enthusiast. Uh, for open market solutions, making markets work efficiently, as Kwasi Kwarteng or Liz Truss. I agree with that. But the, the delusion is to believe that all you need to do as a government is to step back. Markets exist and operate effectively uh, when regulators have clear idea, a clear objective of what they're seeking to deliver. And one of the things that you have to deliver as a government is sound money. And my concern, my principal concern this week, is that it, the actions of the government are undermining the commitment to sound money, which was the essential bedrock of both the Thatcher and major administrations. Yeah, brilliant. OK, I'm now going to draw a line because I promised you we'd talk about health and folk at home will want to hear your, your views on that. Uh, but there's a nice segue because it is about money. Uh, to me, and we've talked on this programme a lot about the uh, challenges in the care sector and bed blocking, that £500 million to help clear folk out of hospitals into the care sector because they've been cured medically, but they still need looking after. That seemed to me to be a standout bit of wisdom. Yes, uh, I've said, I, I agree, actually, uh, with that priority. I said that Therese Coffey was right on, on doctors' pensions, and she's right as well 
to ensure that there's proper resource to enable people to move out of uh, bed out of NHS beds when they no longer need them into social care. That's true. But w let's look at this in a more rounded way. I hate the word holistic, but let's call it. Uh, uh, let's look at the health and care system as a whole. The same week uh, that we uh, that the government is putting. In, in terms of its own budget, a relatively modest amount of money into addressing bed blocking, it's also saying that it's no longer going to pursue an obesity strategy. Now, one of the things you have to do in health policy is to address, the, the, uh, is to address prevention, early intervention, avoiding unnecessary illness. If we're going to have uh, no more uh, government interest in obesity, uh, the result is we shall have uh, a greater obesity that will lead to greater illness, greater demands on the health service. And so you have more people going into hospital. It's great to help people come out when they don't need to be there anymore. I agree with that. But what we have to do also is to address the, the, the underlying demand or the underlying causes of ill health in order to relieve the pressure on the, on the whole health and care system. It's fascinating. One of the team um, was talking about that early on and, and, and wanted to include it in this conversation. Uh, and for folk at home, there's a very, very good half-page piece in the Daily Mail today spelling out the dangers of exactly what Stephen was just talking about. When I read it, Stephen, one of the other standout things that struck me uh, on obesity, it, it was a striking example uh, of a piece of policy that, that people like John Reid, a like you, a former health secretary for the Labour Party, and you, a former health secretary for the Conservative Party, absolutely agreed on, and that is to take pressure off the NHS, we need to do a lot more to look after ourselves, and GPs can help in that respect on things like obesity. Yeah, absolutely. It's important to, to emphasise, I don't think any of your listeners really need to have this explained to them, but uh, obesity is not just about looking good and not being overweight. It's the fundamental cause of a substantial amount of cardiovascular disease, of diabetes, of dementia. If you unhealthy lifestyles, uh, of, uh, they lead to demand on the healthcare system. Actually, much, much more importantly, they undermine the quality of the individual's life. So that's why, in my view, government should... Uh, uh, people often say this is the nanny state. Actually, I don't think it's anything to do with the nanny state. It's insisting that if you sell food to the public, you have a responsibility for the health effect of the product that you sell. And that's something that government should engage with food manufacturers in order to ensure that food manufacturers are not a cause of illness.